Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are creating this amazing blink counter. You can see here, we are counting the number of times this person is blinking and we are also plotting it on a graph live within our Python environment. So all of this is written in Python. Uh, we are counting how many times she has blinked and we are plotting the data uh, based on our values. So we are using uh, at the back end, we are using a face detection module. We are getting the landmarks. We are finding the distances. We are taking their average. We are doing lots of different things to make it smoother and to have some good results. And you can see whenever she blinks, the color actually changes to green. And that is a good indication of whenever the blink happens. So sometimes it's really fast, so you can't see. But here, when it turns green, there is a direct uh, indication of when it blinks. So this is the idea. If you like this computer vision concepts, if you like these videos, do check out our premium courses that are available on our website and they will teach you real world applications of how to implement and step by step complete course, a complete pathway of how to start from basics and go up to uh, an advanced or a pro level. So without further ado, let's get started. So here we are in our PyCharm project and the first thing we will do is to go to file and we are going to go to settings and then we are going to install the required packages. So we will go to project and Python interpreter and here uh, it is showing nothing because there is no interpreter we are going to add. So we'll click on settings and add and we are going to add the existing environment. So. This will add the packages and then we have to install CVZone and that is pretty much what we need. And of course it will install the uh, OpenCV package and the NumPy package for us. Uh, one more package that we need is MediaPipe that we will be using uh, for detecting of the face mesh and from there we are going to detect the eye. So that is what is required. So let's just wait for them to install. Now, uh, if anything does not work properly, it's always best to go back to the same versions. So this version right now for MediaPipe is 0.8.91. And the version for CVZone, the latest one is what? 1.5.4. So if you use these versions, you will have the exact same results. You can use the later version as well, but you might need to change some stuff. Uh, if, for example, the media pipe package changes or we change something in the CVZone package. So now here in our project, we already have a video file. And this video file is basically of a woman and she is blinking. She's blinking quite a lot. Uh, it's a few second video. There is an error installing packages failed. I'm not sure what happened there. Let's try it again. We are going to add media pipe. Hit install. Hopefully it will work this time. Uh, now, as I was saying, we have this video and we are going to use it for detecting the blink. You can always use the webcam as well. So if you turn, if you want to turn that on and using your face, if you want to do that, you can do that as well. That's uh, not a big deal. So the package is successfully installed. So we can close this now. And now we are going to right click and we are going to create a new Python file. And let's just call it blink counter. So here in the blink counter, we will need the CVZone package. We will need the OpenCV package. So we will write here import CV2 and then import CV zone. And then from this, we are going to first add on our video. And once we have the video running, then we are going to apply the logic. So let's just write cap equals CV2 dot video capture. And the video that we want to capture is basically uh, in our folder called video dot MP4. So this is the one that we are going to play and it is already 1280 by 720. But if it was not, then we would change it a little bit because we want to keep consistent uh, sizing. 
because we are going to have multiple images that we will plot so when we want to merge them together it will be easier if they have the same size so we will write while true and then we are going to write that the success and the image equals cv2 uh, not cv2 cap dot read and then we are going to write cv2 dot i am show and we will show our image and then we will write img and then we will write cv2 dot wait key and then we will give one millisecond delay so this should in theory run our video and there you go this is the video that we are using and you can see right now it's very fast and it is quite big to see so what we can do is we can scale it down cv2 dot resize and we can give in uh, the image and then we will give in the exact dimensions that we want 640 by 360 so it is 128 by 720 so you divide it by 2 and this is what you get so let's run that and there you go no wait what no uh, we didn't put it back in an image so that's why it didn't work so we have to write image equals and there you go so now um it's it's more uh, usable as you can see we can see the whole picture and it's not overlaying on the code that much so it will be easier to navigate so now what we will do is this is the first thing that we did we imported the video and it's all fine but as you can see it it shuts down very quickly and this is what we don't want so what we will do is we will check out how many frames the total number of frames this video has and if that total number of frames is equal to the number of frame that we are currently at then we will reset the frame so we can write if cv2 uh, not cv2 cap cap dot get so this is the capture device the capture object we are getting from that what exactly do we want to get what is happening here what exactly do we want to get we want to get cap underscore prop um, uh, position frames so this will give us the position of the current frame that we are in then we will check whether it is equal to the total uh, count of the frames so cap dot prop underscore uh, frame count so that is the one that we will check so if they are equal then we are going to set so we will write cap dot set and we will set our position of the frame to zero so we will restart it from the beginning so if we run this now if we run this now it should keep running there you go so right now you can see the video keeps playing and it doesn't shut down it just repeats itself so this is much easier to work with because uh, it will not shut down again and again so this is good now we have our video running now we need to get the face detection so we are going to use the media pipe package we have a wrapper in the cv zone so we will write import or we will write from cv zone dot face mesh module not face detection the face detection will also work but it will not give you all the what do you call uh, i think it has six landmarks but the face mesh module has 468 so it's a very big difference so we are going to use the face mesh module because it will give us more accurate results and it will give us more landmarks that we need for our eyes so that is good now we are going to create our detector so we will write detector equals uh, we will write face mesh detector and inside that we are going to give in the maximum number of faces as one so we don't want to do it for multiple faces we are only doing it for one face and we are going to plot it as well so plotting it for multiple faces will be a little bit different than this we will do it with one face and let's say this is your challenge to go ahead and try it with multiple faces so if there are two faces you should you should have two plots with two colors and uh, with two faces and the blinking you have to detect twice so that's a good challenge so for now we will just keep it at one and we will go down and we will write here 
that we want to find the face so we will write here detector dot find uh, face mesh and we will give in our image and in return it will give us the faces and it will also give us the image which one comes first the image or the face the image comes first so the image the image and then the faces so that should give us that and uh, do we want to draw okay let's let's draw for now later on we will remove the drawing because it's annoying to be honest uh name image is not defined what is happening okay we need to put this above our image and there you go there you go so now you can see we are getting all the 468 points and it is quite stable it is working fine and especially with the eye region you can see there's not a lot of movement there's not a lot of jerkiness uh, later on we will add some averaging as well to make it a little more smoother but by default you can see it's not that bad so uh, and if you want to see it on the uh, the whole picture as the original size you can remove the resizing and here you can see a little bit in more detail that it is actually working quite well so that's the thing now the the annoying part here is finding out these numbers these numbering is actually quite bad to be honest because um, they, they don't really have a, a sequence or at least I couldn't find the sequence uh, they just keep moving around with the numbers so we need to know a certain amount of points and I have uh, tried to find a few and then let's see if we can find the others as well. So based on these points, we are going to find the blink. So let's go ahead and uh, create a list. So let's call it point list equals and inside this we are going to give our IDs. Or should we write ID list? Let's write ID list because these are IDs. So why not write ID list? So in the ID list, I have checked earlier and we have 22, 23 and 24. Let's say these are the three points that we are going to test now. And what we will do is we will simply plot it. We will say that if faces, if faces has something inside it, if something is available in that list, then we are going to get the face face equals faces at zero because we know that we are only having one face so we will grab that and then after that we are going to plot all these uh, or we are going to draw all these points so we will say that for id in uh, id list we are going to uh, draw we will draw the circle so we will write cv2.circle we will draw on our image and what else do we need we need the center so the center position uh, is basically face at the ID number so we will write ID and then we have the radius mm, let's put it at 5 and the color is let's say uh, 0 or let's put it purple 255 0 and 255 so this is our uh, code and do we need anything else no I think it's fine there is a thickness parameter as well but we didn't use it so you can see the purple dots but it's not very visible so let's just remove this so here in the face mesh we can write draw draw equals false so it will not draw and it will be easier for us to see what is happening there you go uh, okay so we can see but it is a little bit harder to see because we didn't put the thickness so let's the, put the thickness as cv2 dot filled so we want it filled so it's easier to see and there you go so now you can see very clearly these three points and for the time being if you want we can reduce or we can remove this resizing so we can see a little more clearly what is happening so there you go these are the eye points so we we are heading in the right direction we need to add a few more points and uh, what are the points 26 uh, 110 
157. So you can see how weird these numbers are. Like they are all over the place. So that's why it's a little bit difficult to work with this. There you go. And if we run it, there you go. So this is for the left eye. And uh, you can see that we are getting all these points. Now I do want to find, I didn't find it earlier, but I do want to find the edge of this point as well. So let's try to find that. So let's just go 162. Let's see what happens. There you go. So this is the problem. <laughs> it goes way away, uh, way far and it's, it's a little bit harder to find. So, okay, so I googled it and it seems it's 130 and 243. So let's check that. Yep. This and this. Yeah, this. I don't know which one is this. Is it 162? I thought we removed it. Okay, that's perfect. So now we are pretty much getting the complete eye and we can play around with these values. So what exactly are we doing here? So to find the blink, what we need to do is we need to find the distance between the eyelids. So the top part of the eyelid and the bottom part of the eyelid. But the problem here is that if you just use the distance, uh, it will be a little bit difficult to tell if you have blinked or not, because when you go back and forth, if I go back, the distance will change. If I go front, the distance will change. And I didn't blink, but still the distance is changing. So if I go closer, it will become bigger, the distance. If I go backwards, the distance will become smaller. And at some point, it will become so small that it will think it's blinking, which is definitely not the right way to do it. So what exactly can we do? Let's, let's just, first of all, get the points and we will get the distance between these points and let's see how it works. So, now the distance of, uh, let me check the values again. The distance that we are looking for uh, is the left upper point, let's call it left up, equals to face at 159 and the left down equals face at 23 face at 23 so these are the two points that we are looking at and we want the distance between these two points so we can write here detector detector dot find distance and we will give in the left up and the left down. And we will say that this is the, let's say, horizontal length. Or let's say length horizontal. So let's go ahead and print it out. So print left, uh, Wait, length, horizontal. Now, uh, it doesn't just output the length. It will also output some information. So we can ignore that because we don't really need it. But if you don't add this, uh, this will not be a number. It will be a list. So we have to make sure of that. It's working fine. There you go. And there we have it. So this is the value that we are getting. And when she's blinking, the value would get lower. So here you can see on the left hand side, it is 30, 24, 20, 24, 28, 29. So we can say right about 20 or 24, less than 24, something like that is basically a blink. So what we can do is we can actually draw a line and uh, we can write cv2.line and we will give in our image. We will give in the left up and the left down and then we will give in the color. So it will be 255, or should we change it? Let's change it, zero, 200, and zero. So that will be a little bit dark green. And the thickness, let's give it the value of three. Let's see how that works out. 
So let's run that. There you go. So now you can see uh, what exactly are we finding the distance. So this is the line that we are trying to find. Now again, as I mentioned, if I go backwards or forwards, uh, the value will change. So let me actually show you uh, with our webcam. So let's run that. So there you go. So if I if I move forward and backwards, you can see the value is changing. So that's not good. So it, it should remain the same, right? So just using the distance is not really enough to, to actually use this methodology. So what can we do? What we can do is we can take a ratio. We can take the ratio of the upper and the lower lid versus the ratio of the actual eye. So when we take that ratio, uh, we are basically kind of normalizing it so that it doesn't affect whether you are back or forward. So the values at these points, it is 130 and 243. So we are going to write here. So we will say that the left eye at left equals uh, 130. So we will write face at 130, 130, and then the left at right equals 243. So face 243. So again, we are going to draw the line and we will find the distance. So let's find the vertical distance now. Wait, that was vertical, my bad. That was vertical. And this is horizontal. What is happening? Vertical. And yeah, where is horizontal? This is horizontal. So we are finding the horizontal and we are writing left, left, which is a very bad name, to be honest, for a variable. So we will also copy the line. We will also copy the line and we will write here left, left and left, right. Okay, so yeah, let's, let's run that. There you go. So now we can see the distance of the eye itself. So that will remain constant, it will not change, but the distance of the vertical will change. So from there we can find this value. Now, instead of checking only the vertical, what we will do is we will divide it by the length of horizontal. So let's try that. There you go. So now we are getting some decimal places. And well, what, what we can do is we can multiply it by, let's say, 100. So we can get some better values. More pleasing for the eye. Multiplied by 100. And let's just make it an integer. So that, again, more pleasing to the eye. There you go. So now you can see 43, 42, then it goes to 30 as well. So let's just stop that and we can see somewhere, yeah, here it goes to 30. Here it is 40, 45. So we can say anything above uh, 35 is a blink, let's say. So we will write the code for that as well, that we want to check it and we want to plot it as well. So we need to count and we need to plot. So what should we do first? Should we count or should we plot? Um, actually, if we plot, it will be easier to count. So if it will be easier to see how many times are we counting properly or if we are not counting properly. So that will actually help us. So let's go ahead and do that. So how can we count, uh, how can we plot? So we can write from cvzone dot plot module import live plot. So we are going to plot something live and all we need is a single value of whatever we want to plot. Uh, the value that is changing, in our case, it is the ratio of um, the, the eye, the blink. So let's go down and we are going to create 
this life plot. So we will call its plot, let's say y equals uh, life plot. And what do we need inside? Uh, we need the width and the height. So the width and the height will keep it as 640 by 480 uh, by 360 because uh, that is half of our image and we will merge them together so that it is in one window. It will be easier for us to see what is exactly is happening. So that is good. And then we need the Y limit. So the Y limit, let's, right now we don't really know much. So let's just put 20 and 50. So like looking from these values, you can see it's not going above 50 and it's not going below 30 something. So let's just put 20 and 50. Okay, what else do we need? We need the interval. The interval is already given. And yeah, so that, that is pretty much it. That's what we need for the plot. And once we have that, what we need to do is uh, when we want to plot, all we have to do is to go down here and we will write plot y dot update and we will give in the value. So the value is basically this. So we will remove this and we are going to write here that our, let's say ratio equals this. But right now we are going to remove the integer because uh, if we have floating values, uh, it will be a little bit smoother. The, the plot will be a little bit smoother. So yeah, so we have plot.update and we will write here ratio and in return it will give us the image plot and what we can do is we can add that image here and we can write image plots and image plot. So let's go ahead and run it. And there you go. So now you can see we are getting somewhere whenever the, okay, it's way too fast. <laughs> we need to slow it down. Um, let's just put 25. So it's a little bit slower and easier for us to see what's happening. There you go. That's good. So now you can see the blinking is working good. It's pretty good. Okay, so le let's put them in one uh, image so that it is easier to see what exactly is happening. So what we can do is, mm, okay, what we can do is we can use the cvzone function, cvzone dot stack images, and we want to stack two images together, image and image plot. So these are the two images we'll stack and uh, how many columns we want? We want only one column. We want it one above the other, not horizontally. We need it vertically. And then the scale, you can add a scale. You can decrease or increase. So we will keep the scale as one. Now, this will not work because our image right now is 1280 by 720. So we need to reduce it. Uh, for detection and everything, we want to keep it the same because it's bigger image, it will detect better. But once we are about to show, then we are going to change the size of the image. There you go. And instead of plotting twice, what we will do is we will write here image stack, image stack, and we will call this uh, image stack. So yeah, but this is the case when the face is found. If there is no face, you cannot really plot. There's nothing to plot. So in that case, we need to write here else. Else we will have the image stack and we will resize the image, but instead of image plot, we will plot the image again. So if there is no face found, it will just show you the two images. So there you go. So now you can see uh, it is looking quite good. You can see, let's, let's try to stack it horizontally. Does it look better than that or not? Let's see, two columns and two. Uh, yeah, maybe this is better. Okay, so here we can see this is our value that we are getting and actually, 
let's let's try it with the integer let's see how much of a big effect it has on the plot well not that much so i still think it's good but what we want to do is we want to average it out so that it is a little bit smoother it will look nicer and it will look better um so what we can do is we can create a list uh let's say ratio what is happening ratio list equals empty and we are going to append to the ratio list so we, whenever we get the ratio we are going to append so we will write ratio list dot append and we will append the ratio and we will check if the ratio list ratio list uh, no we will check the length of it we will check the length of the ratio list if it's greater than let's say 10 then we are going to remove one element so all the time it will be 10 so the number of ratios that we have it will be 10 from our previous runs so we want to take the average of these 10 values so what we will do is we will write here that ratio dot ratio list dot pop and we want to pop the very first value so that is zero so we will write ratio list dot pop zero so let's write it like this and oh they want us to put it down so it's okay uh, okay so that is good and now what we can do is we can take the average of the ratio so we will write here ratio average equals the length of the ratio list and the the ratio list the sum of the ratio list sum of the ratio list so if we divide the sum of the ratio list minus uh, divided by the length of the ratio list that will give us the average so we will write here ratio we will write here ratio average instead of just writing ratio Let's run that. There you go. So you can see how smooth the values are now compared to before. But now you can see the peaks are really bad. <laughs> so we need to find that sweet spot where it's not too aggressive. Uh, but if it's too aggressive, then we have to dial it down. So we have to take less average. There you go. So now it's looking better. Or maybe just three values. yeah i think that's good so here we can see it's not going below 25 the distance is decreasing right so it should not be like that so i think we need to flip so let's write here is it flip or life plot invert so this will be invert equals to true Okay, so now that we have this running, what we need to do is we need to actually count how many times did we blink. So now comes the main part. So we are going to go down here and we are going to say that this is the blink counter and that is equals to zero. And later on, we will keep counting uh, when that happens. So when should we count it as a blink? very simple whenever the value goes above a certain number so so we will check the ratio average so we will say if ratio average is less than uh, let's say what was the value um, let's say 35 then we are going to say blink counter uh, plus equals one so that's the main idea so actually we didn't show it so we need to show that once we are done here and should we plot it on that no let's put it on the real image so we will write here that cv zone cv zone dot put text rect so you can put a rectangle and a text or you can use this function to put the text and the rectangle together 
This one is a little bit easier to work with and it centers it by autom uh, automatically. So uh, I use that for the text. So we will write string or, or let's write an F string. In the F string, we are going to write the blink counter and we will write uh, blink count. So, and then what do we need to give? We need to give the position. So the position, let's say, is 100 and 100. We can change it later on. Not a big deal. Okay, let's push it a little bit back. So 50. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, so now the issue is that we can see here there's one, two, three, four counts, but here it's showing 14, 15, 18. And that is definitely not correct. So what exactly is happening? What's happening is that it's not one single frame where the value goes below, uh, let's say, 25 or 35. There are multiple frames that the value goes down and then it comes back up. So it's not just one frame. It might be two frames, three frames, five frames. So we need to make sure that we don't count during these frames. So once we find the first one, we will count it as a blink, and then we will wait for, let's say, 10 frames before we accept another one. So how can we do that? We will go up here and we will say that counter equals zero. And then we will go down here and we will write that here, if that is the case, we will write counter equals one. So we will start the counter. So we will write here that if the counter is not equal to one or no, to zero, then we are, it means the counter has started. Then we are going to write counter uh, plus equals one. And we will check if the counter um, is, let's say, greater than 10, then we will write counter equals zero. So I will explain again. When this happens for the very first time, it will make the counter one. If the counter becomes one, if it's not zero, then it will keep adding one, two, three, four, five. And if the counter becomes more than 10, then it will make the counter zero. So it will reset, it will accept again. But here, Every time it's less than that, it will keep counter as one. So we need to write here and counter equals counter equals zero. So if this is below 35 and the counter is zero, it means the previous counter is not running, then we will accept the blinks. So let's run that. There you go. One, two, three, four, five six, seven, wait, was that wrong? No, I think it was seven, okay. So that's the basic idea. So here you can see it is very clear when the person is blinking, so that is quite good. Now what we can do here, uh, just to give it a little more visual effect, we can, we can change the color. Whenever it blinks, we can change the color, uh, we can, Put the default color as purple, 255, But whenever there is a blink, we will change the color to red, uh, to green. So let's just say that, where are the colors? Okay. We want to change the color of everything. So even these two, the left down and the right down. Uh, these are the lines. They were green by default. Yeah, actually, let's just keep them green. That's fine. Um, yeah, this one, these are the circles. We will put them as green. Then what else? The line is fine. And then we are putting the text. This one, we can change the color. We can write, um, what is the name of this? Uh, color of the rectangle equals color. And even the plot, we can change the color. Uh, the second second parameter is the color, so we can change that. Uh, is there anything else? 
think that should be fine. So let's try that. Blink, blink. What happened? No color changes. Oh wait, my bad. <laughs> I I didn't put it to go to green. Oh, come on, where is it? Yeah, here we have to write color equals um, zero to five, uh, zero to hundred and zero. There you go. So now it's going green, but it's not going back. So we need to put uh, the color back at this point, 2550 and uh, 255. Come on, 255. There you go. So whenever there is a blink, it becomes green and the rest of the time it is purple. So during the whole video it counts seven times. So when this ends it should be 14. Yeah, 14. So it uh, she blinks seven times during the whole video. So now you could do the same thing with the right eye as well. We have done it for the left one, you can do it for the right one as well. And you can plot them together as well, that's also possible. And uh, there's, there's a lot of things you can do. And this is just a start. It is not feasible for all situations, but in a controlled environment, this should work quite well. So I would love to see some applications from this, for example, maybe a password or maybe some analysis of how many times a person blinks, are they nervous, uh, are they excited or something like that. So hopefully, especially using this plot, and we can take this data, we can store it in an Excel file or CSV file, whatever format that we want, and we can uh, do some analysis on it later on as well. And of course, we can add this to CCTV footages and see um, how many times people are blinking, if they are sitting in front of an officer or somewhere else in the airport or wherever we want to add it. So it is something practical, but of course it will need a little bit of uh, tuning to actually work in the real world environment. But uh, over here it's working quite well. And uh, do test it with other videos and see what do you get. Because the face tracking, the face mesh module is quite accurate. So I'm hoping that it will work with the other videos as well. And uh, yeah, so this is pretty much it for our video. I hope you have learned something new. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and comment below what would you like to see next. And I will see you next time.